Are parents going too far trying to make their children's toys match their aesthetic? So this mom just made a TikTok where she took a very colorful kid's Christmas tree and decided to turn it very sad. You see, she wanted the tree to match her house's aesthetic, and apparently that aesthetic calls for any fun colors to be eliminated from her home. I do think it's sad when moms choose their aesthetic over letting kids be kids. Who cares if you think it's ugly? It's not for you. Yes, gorgeous. Stunt your kid's development by turning anything colorful into a sad beige. I'm I'm glad you put your needs first. Welcome to a morning in my sad beige life. Oh, honey, your aunt gave you the... Okay, you know what? You can still play with it. Just give me like 10 minutes, okay? What happened to allowing kids to just be kids? These crazy, sad beige moms of TikTok will do anything to make their children's lives conform to their perfect, sad beige aesthetic all for their social media. Spray painting perfectly good toys just to match their Instagram aesthetics? It's actually extremely disturbing and selfish. And the worst part is they don't see a problem with it at all. But I do. Let's get into it. I sad beige mom my face. <laughs> no hint of color or signs of life here. Hello everybody, it is me, Salem, and welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are feeling holly and jolly and bright and merry and hairy because Christmas is only 15 days away. And honestly, I'm not feeling it. No one can buy any Christmas gifts for me now that I'm older because I don't want a Brad stall anymore. Don't ask me what I want for Christmas unless it's a house or Ozempic. Being an adult around the holiday times might not be the funnest thing in the world, but you know what? At least we're not the kids of these sad beige mom TikTok mommy vloggers because these kids ain't getting no Christmas because it's too tacky and too colorful. Most recently, there was a TikTok that went viral of a TikTok mom neutralizing, yes, I use the word neutralizing, a kid's toy Christmas tree because it didn't match her aesthetic. Go ahead and call me crazy or a sad beige mom for what I'm about to do. Today, I'm giving the step to my first Christmas tree, a total makeover. I'm leaning into my inner Pinterest mom with the vision to neutralize the tree. Neutralize the tree. Neutralize the tree. Girl, what in the Grinch? Yeah, I got you. Can't do it. I can't. You are stressing me the hell out. I, 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 I just find it hilarious that social media has just overtook us so much to the point where everything needs to be Instagram ready. But this has started a huge conversation on TikTok, on social media, outside of social media in general, about the trend of sad beige moms. And other people are upset because it went from colorful to sad beige. This person commented, yes, gorgeous. Stunt your kid's development by turning anything colorful into a sad beige. I'm glad you put your needs first. I work in children's developmental research and they need color so bad. Beige walls, beige blankets, beige clothes, beige toys. If there's any sign of life or color, it must be destroyed. And of course, a lot of people are criticizing the sad beige mom movement by stating that it's really sad that these kids can't grow up with their own personalities, their own color choices, their own toy choices, and basically how sad it all is. But honestly, I think this trend goes a lot deeper than what people think. I think it really is tied to hyper aware culture, more specifically being hyper aware of not wanting to look poor, everything needing to be social media pretty, and also classism. Yes, I know, that seems like a really huge jump, but trust me, keep watching and it'll all make sense. So before we get into today's video, make sure you grab a cup of tea and sit back and relax and enjoy today's video. But before we get into today's video, y'all know the drill, I gotta pay my bills so that I can afford to buy my kids, which is my one-year-old Pomeranian, some actual toys. So we have two sponsors for today and the first being HelloFresh. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal cat. So y'all already know it's the holiday season, which means that everyone is super busy trying to get their shopping done. But with HelloFresh, you can skip those trips and save time with easy, tasty recipes delivered straight to your door. One thing that I personally love about HelloFresh is how they don't only have meals for dinner, lunch, and snacks, but also for breakfast, which has saved me many a time when I'm super busy in the morning. My 
personal favorite recipe is their PB&J oatmeal. And you can try some yummy breakfast recipes too. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Salem Tovar and use code Salem Tovar for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscriptions is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Salem Tovar free with code Salem Tovar free. Go ahead and try HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thank you to Kajabi for sponsoring today's video as well. One of the biggest challenges as a creator is making enough to earn a living doing what you love. And Kajabi makes it easy to diversify your revenue, build your own brand, and turn your audience into customers. With the disruption of revenue streams from algorithm updates and product changes, if you're a creator and you're not using Kajabi to diversify your income beyond ad revenue and brand deals, you're literally leaving money on the table. Kajabi is the ultimate all-in-one platform that helps creators and entrepreneurs build successful online businesses by unlocking predictable reoccurring revenue. With robust analytics, marketing tools, third-party integrations, and easy payment options. And the best part is you don't need a huge audience to make sustainable income, and you too can start earning. Right now, Kajabi is offering a 30-day free trial to start your own business if you go to kajabi.com slash Salem Tovar. That's K-A-J abi.com slash Salem Tovar. Go to kajabi.com slash Salem Tovar to earn more doing what you love. All right, let's get into this. Part one, how sad beige moms came to be and how the sad beige mom aesthetic became popular and the villainization of color. All right, so what the freak is a sad beige mom anyway? A sad beige mom is a mom who decorates her house in tones of beige, dresses her kids in natural fibers and colors, and only buys toys in shades of beige. It's basically like minimalism, but for babies. Anything that has to do with color is a threat to their perfectly aesthetic world. How did this movement start? How did it become popular on TikTok? What is the dealio? The origin had three main principles for this lifestyle. The first being not having gendered toys or gendered clothing, specifically trying to avoid gendered colors such as blue and pink, and instead opting for toys that are neutral tones and neutral colors that can be gender neutral. The second principle is to buy non-toxic toys. A lot of colorful toys have been recalled time and time again because of the paints that they've used. Some materials used even in teething toys for babies have been recalled for toxic materials. So the whole point of this lifestyle is to buy more natural toys, which means wooden blocks, non-toxic stuffed animals. And the third principle for this lifestyle is that it's more eco-friendly with not only purchasing more non-toxic toys and prioritizing less toys and less stuff in general in a kid's room so that they can really value the things that they have rather than over buying items for them all the time. And honestly, all those things don't sound that bad to me at all, especially because baby culture in America is heavily involved involved in deep-rooted capitalism where it's all about buy more stuff because they're just trying to get a quick buck from new parents but the movement has definitely shifted into territory where it's lost all its principles however we all know when something has pretty good origins the internet ruins it this whole natural lifestyle was completely overtaken on social media by family vloggers mommy vloggers instagram moms there is an insane amount of copy paste mommy influencers who post the same boring beige toys in their sad beige outfits in their sad beige white home doing nothing but being boring. I'm sure you have seen these types of videos everywhere because it's not just TikTok, it's Instagram, it's YouTube, it's huge on Pinterest, like it's everywhere. A lot of people definitely take it way too far. The mom spray painting the Christmas tree to match the rest of her house aesthetic isn't the first sad beige mom to go viral for making things look boring. It's a lot of parents who go viral all the time for spray painting their kids toys to match their aesthetic or getting rid of certain toys or getting mad at relatives for buying certain color toys that don't match their aesthetic which i think is actually really ironic because the original movement had to do with buying toys that were non-toxic and now these parents are literally spray painting and then giving it to the kid y'all are doing the exact opposite of what the lifestyle requires you to do the cause of this is definitely that it is no longer about the original principles but it has everything to do do with the aesthetics. Who cares if little Billy is gonna have a mouth full of spray paint? The parent had to make it white 
or else it wouldn't have matched their aesthetic duh this movement has really shifted towards this fear of not looking social media ready and the fear of looking tacky which let's just be honest when people say they don't want something to look tacky they actually want to say that they don't want something to look poor or lower class no literally a huge part of this trend of minimalism and sad beige moms more specifically i've seen a lot of millennials saying that they are super drawn to minimalism because they were because they grew up in hoarder houses houses with no space or new things just the aesthetics and looks that are associated with lower class homes labeling it as traumatic as we all know millennials love doing that making trauma their entire personality hey i have a video on that go watch that after this instead of finding balance in it all they decided to go the complete opposite direction of what they were raised with by getting rid of literally everything not even color is acceptable but gen z is definitely trying to re-normalize things being colorful there have also been parents who directly defy the sad beige moms by making a gothic baby room which slayed apart from the hatred of color there is one shared characteristic that is really huge that the majority of these sad beige moms share and that is money baby i genuinely believe the majority of people who are joining this movement are upper class well off privileged millennials because this lifestyle is not cheap and I have a feeling that they want you to know that it's not cheap. Part 2. How social media has completely destroyed the color in our homes, in our architecture, all in the name of looking aesthetically pleasing, modern, and wealthy. At one point in social media, having furniture, having items, having decor, having color became tacky. If anything has color on social media, even cabinets, people will call you poor. No, like literally i recently have ran into some tiktoks where people are talking about if you have brown cabinets in your house then that means you're poor even cabinets are getting canceled now like i hate this generation i was born in the wrong generation i should have been born between 6000 and 3150 bce where the egyptian god anubis ruled all the lands and i would be a sphinx cat being fed grapes nowadays i think social media has become just such a pro criticism place down from how you look to how you speak to now like people criticizing your homes because everything has become a lot more invasive it used to be not normal for people to show what their cars look like Look like or what the inside of their homes looked like like that type of stuff was private the only times you would ever see like really big influencers show off their homes is when they did house tours but that was like a little treat for the fans you know but now it's just so normal that everyday people on tiktok just film their homes straight up in the background while they talk that now that has become almost free real estate for criticism as well people calling out other people's homes for being too messy for being their decor being too ugly how if you have brown cabinets you look lower class and that is bad for some reason people are just way too chronically online nowadays to the point where they have become hyper aware of absolutely everything around them gen z obsesses over looking perfect on camera now your background of your rooms and houses and your kids toys also have to be perfect all for the camera because nowadays everything is filmed nothing is private anymore which has definitely given birth to copy paste influencers and people who aren't even influencers everyone's using the same aesthetic everyone dresses the same there is a huge hive mindset the rise of people in general on social media who try to make everything look aesthetic as much as possible going to the gym has to be aesthetic eating has to be aesthetic trying a new recipe skincare routine has to be aesthetic either everything has to be perfect and aesthetic and pleasing to the eyes of social media or else you're gonna get dragged and called out for it and yes that includes the small details like brown cabinets how dare they not be minimalistic and white how dare you look poor and there is an actual like scientific explanation as to why we associate the color white with wealth and why people who have like subconscious biases associate more color with foreign scary cultural aesthetics <laughs> God forbid that a piñata
has color. No, literally. Not even kids' parties are safe from the adults in their lives trying to impress social media by making everything look as rich as possible and as boring and bland and white as possible. But mom, I wanted a Spider-Man party. But that would ruin mommy's Instagram feed. Now go play with your wooden blocks. These ones? Oh no, not those ones. Here, let me spray paint them white real quick and then you can play with them. Despite appearing white today, Greek statues were originally painted with color. But at the beginning of the 20th century during the war, serious diseases like cholera plagued the Greek islands. Whitewash is a cheap disinfectant material that was used to regularly limit the contagion. That and a mixture of time naturally dissolving the color led to the way that we see Greece now which is all white. From it being whitewashed so much with the whitewash cleaning supply associating cleanliness with wealthiness. You see, white in itself, the color, is psychologically associated with feelings of exclusivity and success, which is why we also see the color white in a lot of luxury brands. And even whitewash and limewash white walls are super popular in modern day wealthy homes as an interior design choice to look more high-end. The material marble, which was also very popular in ancient Greece times, is also still associated to this day with higher-end homes and luxury. A study in 2016 said that you need $11,850 to raise a child in his or first year for someone who makes 60 that was in 2016. That number actually has jumped to 23,000 per year. I think there is a direct correlation with sad beige moms and wealth and wanting to show off that they are wealthy and that they are able to not only afford giving their kids a good life, but a life that looks wealthy as well. Attempting to differentiate their parenting life from the lower class parents. Despite baby bottles having the same function, which is to get the baby fed, the difference between this bottle and this bottle is that this one screams tacky and this one is aesthetically pleasing and it's hashtag non-toxic which makes this one about $30 plus taxes plus shipping. Your kid needs that. Your kid needs a sad beige aesthetically pleasing Instagram worthy 1499 convertible storage crib from Pottery Barn. Imagine buying them a normal brown one. Who cares if they're gonna grow up eventually and not use it and you totally wasted a thousand dollars on it. It's worth the Instagram photo. If you ever see like the Ace family houses or, or those types of vloggers, their houses looks like no one lives in them. It's so blank, white everywhere, everything's marble, but it's really popular in really privileged influencer lifestyles because their life is honestly just a whole commercial shoot. There is no personality in these homes. This is why a lot of newer homes look so dead and boring why a lot of people who are buying homes completely destroy them and strip them of all their personality and exchange it for something called millennial gray because they think that these old timey aesthetics are outdated and ugly when in reality it's actually so beautiful we also see this in architecture in general buildings are no longer unique everything is the same everything is blocky and everything is white with tall windows everything just seems so lifeless nowadays they even got my boy mcdonald's over here looking like like a hospital. I miss the cheeseburger seats. And it's really sad to see beautiful, natural, lush places being torn down just to put a Walmart there. Like, girl, bye. So if this is already affecting us this much as adults in the adult world, imagine the kids. Mm. I'm eating a sandwich right now, but we're in the final part. Let's talk about how- Oh god! <laughs> A lot of these sad beige moms are really selfish. They don't care about what their kids want. Besides the very classist history of sad beige moms, a big part of the anti-color sad beige mom culture is that they say that colors are overstimulating to the kids, which has literally been proven time and time again to be completely false. Color literally evokes emotion in us. There is literally psychology in color. Certain colors can bring out certain emotions in you. Blues make us feel like we're safe, like there's trust. Yellows make us feel warmth, cheer, and happiness. Pink is associated with softness and security. Purples are associated with royalty. We associate silver with science and coldness. And white is associated with calmness. There is a benefit to every color that is out there. Yet these sad beige moms insist on relying on just white because of calmness. Now it's no surprise to anyone that having 
a kid is overstimulating and kids in general are overstimulating in themselves. So this is another reason why a lot of sad beige moms are attracted to the color of white because white is literally psychologically associated with calmness, therefore attempting to strip any of the children of being overstimulating. However, what a lot of these sad beige moms don't take into account is that while you are stripping the overstimulation aspect of having kids, which I mean, kids are going to be kids, they're going to be loud and rowdy no matter where you put them, it's not necessarily that a lot of color overstimulates a kid, it's the frame rates sounds, flashing lights, and things like that combining all together that can cause overstimulation, such as literally coco melon. However, just because something has a little bit of color on it doesn't mean that it's automatically bad. Kids love to interact with their environments. Kids are drawn to anything that is on the floor, drawn to plants, they're drawn to paintings, they're drawn to the stuff that we use as adults, like a makeup brush, a book that we left on the coffee table, an ornament on the Christmas tree. And that's because the things that I listed have color where they have textures or patterns that really draw the child's attention and this literally boosts creativity object permanence and curiosity in your child when you raise them in a world that is just completely in white and beige you are stripping your kid of the opportunity to truly explore and interact with their environment but there is no balance it's either a super loud ipad coco melon kid or a sad beige kid with a neutralized Christmas tree like can we just be normal I have seen parents who still have the sad beige mom aesthetic but they do use more pastel colors and more simple toys to help their kids have a creativity boost and I honestly think that this is a really good balance because the toys aren't completely bland but they're also not completely overstimulating and it's giving the kid an opportunity to interact with the toys and really observe them honestly at the end of the day it's your kids your money you guys can do whatever you want with your lifestyle you're the adults i get it however i think that's the problem with a lot of sad beige moms and just parents who give into this type of parenting or aesthetics it's about them it's literally always about them and what they want what they would prefer in their instagram photo what they would rather share on their instagram stories or tiktok it's really selfish there is a huge emphasis on what the adults want always when it should be the opposite when you have a child it's about them when it comes to little small decisions that kids can make like choosing their own toys it really helps their independence and confidence so if your little baby boy or girl or little baby they them i don't know don't cancel me wants to have a toy that doesn't match your aesthetic it's just like i don't know a stuffed bear then i don't see the harm in buying it but if you're living this lifestyle so strictly to the point where you're denying your child the ability to choose things that they like to develop their own personality out of fear of it not being Instagram ready, you are doing parenting all wrong. Everything requires balance. No need to be extreme and buy your kid a toy just to spray paint it so that matches what you want. Let kids be kids. Let kids explore. Let life and color back into your life. Don't be a Grinch, okay? We already have too many Grinches in today's world. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys watched the entire thing, please comment down a duck emoji down below because if you watched the entire video, that means you're awesome. Awesome. Make sure to like and subscribe and press the bell notification thingy that's right by my name and the subscribe button because that's how you'll know whenever I post and when I post in my community tabs and all that jazz. Comment down below what you think on the whole sad beige mom thing. Are you a sad beige mom? If so, make your case because I want to hear. I want to know. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, you guys can. I post about my health journey on there, about my PCOS, about my weight loss. So go ahead and follow me on there if you want it's at underscore salem tover underscore i also post sometimes on tiktok i gotta do better at that also at salem tovar because no one else has my name and as always before i end each video i like to give you guys some homework and today's homework is to paint a painting listen to some taylor swift or something listen to some 100 gex i don't know just let some color back into your life for me will you do that for me i am going to the gym <laughs> because i only have 7,000 steps in right now and I really want to get my 15k steps in so I'm gonna go do that but I will see you in the next video. Bye!